out of here, Charlemagne. <laughs> this ain't Breakfast Club. I, 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 I don't think so. Hey everybody, this is Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck, and this is episode 298 of the Ask Gary V Show. And we have a two-time visitor, somebody I admire tremendously, somebody I call friend. Actually, one of my regrets of, this is actually funny, I just had this huge flight to Australia, mm-hmm. and back, you know, you just get 50 hours in, in flight, and you get to think. And I said, in 2019, as we're starting to get close to that, one of the things I'm definitely gonna do, oh, Alex, I'm so glad you're in the room. One of the things I have to do is make a list of 12, 15, 19 people, and I just have to have dinner with them twice a year. Oh. Because I'm just gonna die regretting that there's these people I like, and normally they're people that get busy as well, and I don't know, we like each other, there's, unless we're showing up on each other's show, it's impossible to like see each other. I know, we've only had dinner like once. That's right, and yeah. so like it's just always gonna be like that, and so like I said, wow, I'm gonna make a list of just, you know, Maybe a dirty, maybe 12, 12 people, and just say, Yeah, you, we'll talk about it later, Alex. Just Our first like, dinner I, was popping. We ended up with like Lenny Dykstra or something crazy oh God, like that. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're so right. <laughs> Hunt and Fish Club. Yeah, Anybody can show absolutely. up at any time. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put this, I want you guys to go on, uh, on live on Instagram as well. I know you were on Facebook Live. I'm going to go Instagram Live as well because I want to get questions in. Um, Andy, I'm going to do it a little different. I'm gonna I'm gonna shout out right now. I'm gonna wait for Instagram to populate a little bit. I'm gonna let the guests uh, say hello. Actually, Charlemagne, why don't you say hello to everybody? Peace to the planet. Uh, I go by the name of Charlemagne the God. I am a father, a husband, and I guess all the professional tags that people care about. A nationally syndicated radio personality with the Breakfast Club, uh, podcast host, New York Times bestselling author, executive producer of a couple of TV shows. You know, just happy to be here. You've been really, really doing it the last five, six, it feels like the momentum is substantial over the last two to three years even. Yes. But you know, over the last half decade, you know, what do you, is that true? And is that a good observation by me? Nah, definitely a great observation. You know, everything's been growing, everything's been evolving. That's one of the reasons that things got very overwhelming. You know, and, and I'm sure you can attest to this, Gary, sure. when you're the go-to person, for a lot of people, it's like, who does the go-to person go to? So, you know, that's what made me start going to therapy like over a year ago because after a while, everybody stopped having the answers for me. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, uh, flirting. You know, when I, when, I, when I like to talk to people who are more successful than me, yeah. most people that are way more Which successful than me. Which you've done a great job with, right? I, I feel like you've been very, one thing I don't do mm-hmm. well is mentor out. Like, I don't. It's just flat out. Really? Yeah. Uh, I think what you do is considered a form of mentorship. No, no. I like to mentor. I fucking love to mentor. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah, I yeah. love it. Yeah. I don't seek out mentorship. I don't Got learn. You. I don't learn from a dinner with Jeffrey Katzenberg or Ariana Huffington. I, I don't. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know why. I, I, I Are you too busy it. talking and not listening, yes, Gary? Yes. Yes, okay. But, but that's, <laughs> the, that's the fake answer. The reality is I listen a lot. Yeah. If you watch, I cut off because I'm listening. It's that I listen to the mark. I don't like synthesized points of view. I like the market. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's why I want to go to Q&A. It's why Instagram, by the way, now Instagram's populated. Instagram, Facebook, if you want to get your question and you're actually going to email something. This is different, Andy. I've got a new idea. Okay. I want you to put your question in the title of the email and I want you to email, where should we send it? Should we, how fast does it take us to create an actual email in this company these days? It better be 2.2 seconds. They can email it to, uh, what do you got? I mean, you've got all sorts of fucking emails we've made up. I got all, the, all right. Gary, Gary V team at VaynerMedia.com. Gary V E E team? At all right. Gary V E E team at VaynerMedia.com. Put it in the, the air. If you can, you can type it in and pin it if you want. You know how to do that? You know how to pin? I'm impressed. Rag. Good shit. <laughs> uh, it's Gary V E E team at VaynerMedia.com. Put your entire question in the title, and he's gonna start looking at that inbox right now. We're gonna do a bunch of Q and A. Actually, also, actually, put it. Their yeah, your phone number. You gotta put your phone number in the body. Question in the title. Phone number in the body. Got it? Yeah, I don't do a good job with that, Charlotte. I mean, I'm proud of you mm-hmm. for. I, th- I, I, I actually. Again, you know how well we know each other, but just watching your moves, just sensing, even in our interactions and watching out, I think you're very good at that. Yeah. And so that makes sense to me. Cause I feel like I don't have a skill set. So it's just like, for me, I didn't go to college. I don't have any degrees. Like I kind of, 
stumbled into the game of radio. So it's just like everything else that's happening to me. I'm not an expert at any of this stuff. So who am I to give any advice on anything? I just need to shut up and listen for most of the time, most of the time. And you know, a lot of people that I saw who were way more successful than me, they always told me how they went to therapy. You know, how they talk to therapists. So I've been flirting with the idea for a few years. And so I just decided to start going. Do you feel like the stigma of it in the past culture, because it's so great. One of the most exciting things, in my opinion. You go to therapy? I don't. Okay. But one of the most exciting things for me, and I'm not against it, uh-huh. and I, let, me, let me make a very simple uh, point. I'm sure I will. Yeah, yeah. Because one of the things is like, you know, it's moments in time, but like no question, the best thing, one of the best things going on in culture right now is the stigma is melting very quickly. Yeah, it's interesting, it's right? It's huge. Yeah, it feels like the universe is conspiring for us to just have these conversations about mental health. By the way, when I first started writing this book, I wasn't writing this book from the perspective of I'm gonna write a book about By mental health. By the way, health. real quick, just so I can get it off my chest. Yeah. You wrote two fucking books in like eight seconds. 18 months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you sign a two book deal and you felt obligated? <laughs> no, not at all. Did Actually, the first one go well and you're like, I like that and let me do it again? First one did very well. It was a New York Times bestseller. It was on the New York Times list for like seven weeks straight. So it did very well. Very so good. you know how that is. All the publishers start coming to you, pressing you. Hey, we want do another, another book. One. We want another book. I'm like, nope, I don't do things for money. I don't care what the check look like. Yep. You're seven figures, whatever. Yep. Okay, cool. So what? I don't yep. care. Like if I don't have anything to write about, I don't have anything to write about. And I remember being on vacation last year with my family, something you don't do often enough. Enough, I do a lot actually. You like the vacation? Look, Good. I think, I'm glad to know that. Gary. I take seven weeks vacation. Oh, that's I beautiful. I think what I think I've got 2019 needs to be a year where I clarify a lot of me. I love I love that I'm blessed that I love what I do so much yeah. that I want to do it a lot. But I I have every weekend off. I take seven weeks vacation. I'm just going hard when I'm on the field. You're on the field. And I love my game. Yeah, yeah, all, yeah, yeah. And by the way, and most of all. I don't want anybody else to do that. I want them to love what they do as much as I do. And if that's working seven hours a day teaching preschool, then you've won. I think I, you know, I think people associate, and listen, I talk a lot about work ethic. You know what I am? I'm so passionate against entitlement. Oh, 100%. That I think it clouds a lot of other things that I talk about or my truths. Um, I remember you telling me that. I remember you did tell me that you, you, you like, you, you do take vacations. You do take that time. And I, and I remember you said that's one of the things you'll actually spend money on. A hundred percent. To me, that's a great thing to spend yeah. money on. Like, like because I'm so like, I, I so want that. that. Most importantly, I don't want to focus on anything but sucking out time with the ones I love. Yeah. So I don't need any time on logistics. Like, I don't want to set up anything or like, like just get me, you know, overpay for everything to be frictionless. Perfect. So that, exactly. Yeah. And, and you know what's great about me? Perfect isn't, like if I have shitty food, I'm not the one that's like, fuck this. What's perfect to me is I don't have to do anything other than be like, you know, with my brother that's or it. my sister or my kids. You know what I mean? Yeah. My wife, you know, so. I like what you said too, though, because I feel that way about success too. Success is subjective, man. Like if if you're just happy doing what it is that you're doing, that's the win. Like you could be living in Charlotte, North Carolina, making fifty thousand dollars a year, and your your family got a roof it's over their head, and everybody's passion. eating. You got a car, and if you're happy doing what you love doing, you won to me. And by the way, I think that's not far away. I feel like I can see in the same way that if you asked me six years ago, therapy, I would be like, you know, I'm starting to see two or three people talk about it. That makes me. I think it's coming. Yeah. I genuinely think, and I'd love to be one of the thousand faces of. Happiness needs to be the ROI. That's it. Now, now at the same token, we can't demonize work ethic because a lot of people are trying to do that too. I love, I love it. I'm I like you. you we love to grind. We love to hustle. But when it's time to disconnect, I like disconnecting. Fair. Me too. But people are judging people that are working a lot. And to me, it's not about working a lot. It's do you love what you do? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like we don't do that to Beyonce. No. We don't do that to baseball players. No. We don't, we, we're doing it to entrepreneurs, but we're not doing it to other people. Elton John's working his face off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's 72, like out there every, like, because they love it. Some small group of people love either producing content or being entrepreneurs. The problem is entrepreneurship got so cool that everybody wants to be it. It's the same reason that 
athletes fail so much. You don't think entrepreneurship is getting a little bit easier nowadays though? I think there's more opportunity because of the internet. Yeah, yes, I exactly. Do. But I think here's the problem. Everybody thinks, especially look at the young faces, that entrepreneurship means I make a million a year and to me entrepreneurship, and it's amazing. Big shout out to Breakfast Club, first of all, just because it's an incredible program. But that first time I came through, just appreciate your co-sign of like what I spoke about, mm-hmm. but I appreciate Envy pushing back because he didn't know me. He's like, wait a minute. Like, is this this typical, you know, motivational bullshit? The white privileged guy mm-hmm. coming 100%. from a white privileged perspective, couldn't, couldn't telling everybody li- yes. life is so easy, uh-huh. you can make it. Yeah. And nobody knows my backstory, so I don't expect anybody mm-hmm. putting that work. And he goes, give me something tangible. And it led to the flipping shit. Look, yeah. I don't know if you know, because you're busy as fuck and you shouldn't. I see you with your garage sales. It's getting crazy. <laughs> and Charlotte, where it's really getting crazy is what I tried to achieve on Breakfast Club and what I'm trying to achieve here. 57,000 a year loving the thrill of the hunt at Goodwill wow. or on eBay or garage selling versus 71 or 62 or 49 wow. doing something you hate is my dream of entrepreneurship. Not Uber and Facebook and Instagram, which is what everybody's looking at. Yeah. No, can you make more selling the dresses you make handmade than you would working as an accountant? Can you make, by the way, let's go big time. Can you make 400,000 a year mm-hmm. doing a podcast and selling t-shirts versus making 380 being a lawyer and she's living a lifestyle where she needs all 380 to pay for that lifestyle. Can you make 100,000? Can you make 50,000? Like to me, that's, if, you're, if you built something from the ground up, something that you created, you work for yourself, and you put it out there, and you got people buying your product or buying into whatever, that you're, whatever it is you're doing, and you're making $50,000? Like, that's a win. I've, I've got a big one right now. The one that I'm gonna really zero in on, I'm gonna unveil it a little bit right now. If you make eight to $12 an hour, and you have a car, I need to push you to garage selling. Mm. It's almost impossible that you can't make more money flipping than working at a quick service restaurant or a retailer. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I get done educating that, anyway, nonetheless, what's the book about? It's called Shook One, Anxiety Playing Tricks on Me. And you know, I've always, I've dealt with anxiety my whole life. You know, I don't have the kind of crippling anxiety that keeps some people paralyzed in their house just because, sure. you know, I, I don't. You just don't. I, I just don't, you know, but I, I've, I've, I've always had. What's the worst you ever had? The worst panic attack I ever had was nine years ago. That's when I first got clinically diagnosed with it. I had just got fired from radio for the fourth time. I had to move from New Jersey back to South Carolina. I was living with my mom. I was like 31, 32 years old. My daughter was like two. Mm. You know, my now wife, she had to go live back with her mom and, and, and dad in Mount Corner, South Carolina. And I remember just driving down I-26 in South Carolina and feeling like I was having like a heart attack, like a severe, like, oh my God, this is it. Like Fred Stanford, this is the big one, honey. Like heart beating (laughs) crazy fast. He was so good at that. Shortness of breath. Even my my arms felt like they was going numb. Why, because you're so ambitious and talented and you're like, at that point, because I'm listening to the data, Mm -hmm. you're like, fuck, I didn't make it. At that, in that yeah. moment, I felt like I yeah. didn't know what was next. Yeah. And I remember going to the hospital and the doctor doing an EKG on me and he was like, yo, your heart is fine. He was like, yo, sound like you had a panic attack. You said, do you have anxiety? And I was like, no, not that I know of. And he was like, are you stressed out about anything? I'm like, fuck yeah. My life, <laughs> like, motherfucker. Yeah. So in my mind, like most hustlers are, I'm like, all right, so if that's what it is, all I gotta do is get back in position. Mm. Once I get back in position, sure. everything will be okay. Right. But then, you know, nine years later, and you know, you're supposed to be great in life. Like, you know, and you're not, and hit radio yeah, show, yeah. making all types you're of winning. money. You're yeah. Winning. If and, you're not happy, right? Yeah. And I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm happy is, is relative. You know what I mean? That's right. Yeah. And, and by the way, if you're happy 97% of the time, but 3%, you're really struggling? Yeah. That's already 3% too much. That's one thing I learned from my therapist. Ther- my therapist always says, just allow yourself to feel. Yeah. Whatever it is you're going through. Because, you know, we come from, at least me, I come from the, the law of attraction. Your thoughts become things, which I still wholeheartedly believe. So, like, those negative thoughts, that, delf, that like yeah. self-doubt, that insecurity, you want to push that out of your brain immediately. Because you feel like if you hold on to it too long, that it'll actually come to pass. So, for me, it's just like, you know, I, 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 I try to get that energy up out of me. Phone numbers, Instagram, Facebook. Oh, I'm sorry. Phone number. You got an email. How are the emails coming in? We got some good ones. Good. Gary, V-E-E, at... Wait, Team Gary V. You team. just made that? No, we had it. What? Oh. I'm sorry, I apologize. Gary V E E team at VaynerMedia.com. Put your full question in the title and your phone number in the body. And he's about to call a couple of you. Let me just stick on this for one more second. I've been thinking a lot about this, which uh-huh. is why don't I judge myself? Mm. Mm-hmm. 
if you ask me why I stay way happier than I, th- than I think the norm, it's because I think I'm making mistakes all the time. Mm. I always think I'm losing, even in what appears to be winning, because I am. I'm running a big business, I'm doing a lot of things, I see it every day, we mm. suck at YouTube. <laughs> no, but I'm seeing, you know, like, like, you know, like, I, I almost, like, I do so many things. I was gonna buy unbelievable amounts of Netflix stock three years ago. The phone call hung up on me. On vacation, by the way. Wow. Hung up on me, I didn't call him back, never did it. You've See? missed it. You've I mi- do fucking yeah, shit Yeah, you all missed out on some good shit, man. Netflix, I, a lot Uber. Of things, like, like, going to a business meeting that I have to go to and my kids have a recital. How do you I handle that? Easily. Do you just feel like it just wasn't meant to be? A hundred thousand percent. I know what my intent is and I know in a net score, loving them and showing them how to be, ha- like there's, because I've met all the people whose parents went to everything and they fucking hate their lives. Yeah. Because I'm always like, I suck and you, I, I just think everyone sucks. And it makes it easier. I don't that's know. Like, like a, that's a very pessimistic way of thinking. Yeah? I just think it's massively optimistic. Really? Everybody sucks. That means everyone's awesome. Let's go. Now I do feel like my father. <laughs> my father would always tell me, "You're never as good as they say you are. I you're never as bad little, as yeah, they I say think, you well, are." That's for sure. You know, so I, so I do exist in that gray well, area. Well, there's another thing. They saying hasn't been able to penetrate. Yeah, because who the fuck is they? I'm just like you can't. Here's why I don't take their judgment. It's not that they're wrong or I'm right. Mm-hmm. It's that they lack context. Nobody knows what's going on in my bedroom. The world is out of context, baby. The world's out of context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's throwing out judgment now because it's easy. Yeah, because of social media. 100%. But by the way, we always did it. Now we just can read it. People judged you in the streets. People judged you in the office rooms. People judged you at the cafes. You just didn't see it so much. 100%. That's the problem too with the game, you know what I mean? For me, it's just like, you know, you get so much critique from so many different places. I think sometimes subconsciously, if you're not intentionally saying, I'm not listening to none of this shit, subconsciously, it will fuck with you. And it will manipulate you in some way, shape, or form. most people live their entire lives dictated by other people's opinions. Yeah, 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 (laughs) yeah. Either your mom or dad, which is the scariest one, or the net score of Johnny Pants 47 in your comments. Yeah, I mean, I've gotten caught up in that because like, you know, doing radio for 20 years, like especially over the past six or seven, you start reading all of these magazine articles about you and you see all these comments about you and they label you things like, Hip hop's Howard Stern yeah. or a shock jock and this and that. So you start thinking, okay, if this is what people like, I gotta give them more of that. You become a character you yourself. You become a character yourself. 100%. And I used to, and I always say that's the worst thing you could be is a I character think about yourself. It, uh, man, I gotta show you just because I need to show you. Look how many goosebumps. Ooh. I think about it every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my favorite thing about actually running a business and yeah. not being Gary V. Like, I, it's the reason I'm garage sailing. Like, it's, I'm going more to who I am. I fucking love garage sailing. The, the best part, I think, or the most, the, the best thing you can learn from this is being Gary Vee or being Charlemagne the God is like you're not being either if you're not truly being yourself at all times. Good and being bad. yourself at all times is acknowledging whatever it is you're going through good in that and moment, bad. good, good and, bad. and bad, acknowledging the look, thoughts sure. you have, look, the feelings, look, everything. And you're more of a manifested, I'm less of a manifested. I'm a, I just was brought up by a mother who never put her negativity or issues on anybody else and I share her DNA and was conditioned in it. Or, I just don't share my stress. I take on stress. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love, that's just who I am. Yeah, I, I, t- I, try to t- I try to use that anxiety. I turn that fear into fuel. Yep. You know, like if I feel anything negative, I try to turn it into a positive by helping other people. That's what I, that's what I realize. Look, I feel my, like I'm a my, public servant. Look, my favorite thing is like, look, let's talk about life. The life is very simple in a lot of ways. People that look like you doing certain things matter. I'm the biggest believer in that. Okay, my Break grandma. That down. Yeah, I will. So I think when my grandma used to do something that I didn't understand when I was a kid, we would watch TV and they would put up Robert Goldstein, lawyer for, jo-, and she'd be like Ivre, and I didn't even know what it meant for a long time. And after a while, I realized what she was saying in Yiddish mm-hmm. was Jew. Ooh. What I didn't. What and then I didn't like it. Cause I was like, she was too, like every time a Jewish person was on TV, she'd be like, yay, and everybody else, no. And so I saw that as bad. Mm -hmm. What I didn't understand until my 30s was, my grandmother lived in suppression. Mm. She lived in Soviet Russia, where being Jewish was the worst, where her husband went to jail for being Jewish, where that was the lowest on the totem, because of World War II and all that dynamics. You know, anti-Semitism is real in Europe. And I was like, So when oh. she saw him on TV, she was happy. 100%. It was pride, she, she was repping she, her set. Cause she never saw it. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any other yeah. way. I feel the same way with, my, with black people. Of course you do. Yeah, 100%. Well, which is where I'm going. It makes me so happy that you're going here because much like, there's a lot of things that Russian Jews and African Americans and Latinos share mm-hmm. and there's <laughs> flashy clothes, but one thing is like suppre- like not talking about these issues. Yeah, it's a story I talk about in my book how they did a study on um, descendants of Holocaust survivors and how the descendants of Holocaust survivors have so much PTSD and anxiety and trauma. And I'm like, y'all didn't do that study on nobody else in America? <laughs> like, you don't think African Americans go through that? You think Native Americans don't go through that? Of so it's just like, for me, it's just like, why not go do the work? Like, we, I work out three, four times a week physically. Why am I not putting that same type of emphasis into my mind? Get it. Andy, let's go with us. This is so good, man. This is so good. I'm so glad this is getting into the water system. Yeah, it's available it's- uh, for pre-order right now. <laughs> Get in there. Yeah, and it'll be out October 23rd. It'll be out tomorrow. I don't know Beautiful. when it's there. When it's there. So let's make sure we link we it up. Live we're, now? Gonna, we're live. Oh. It's today? T- yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, it'll be out tomorrow. We'll make sure. You know how well the last one sold because of our show. That's a we'll fact. Sure. No, you're right. I'm aware. <laughs> we, have, we have a good crossover. Oh, so we're Who's calling this? people. Sherry. Yeah, we're calling people. Who? Sherry. Sherry. Sherry, don't miss your shot. I love when they don't answer. Sherry, don't message. believe you're really calling. The best part is we leave a message. Hello? Sherry, this is Gary Vaynerchuk, and you're on the Ask Gary V Show with Charlemagne the God. Hey, how are you guys? We're doing really well. How are you? Hey, Sherry. I'm good, I'm good. Hey, hey. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. So my question to you guys is, how do you overcome... Um, social anxiety, like I'm an entrepreneur. Um, I just started my own web development business. I've been in corporate America for over 11 years. Wow. You know, so I have a lot of experience in that field. So far, so good. However, um, when I get into meetings to like, you know, close on deals and contracts, you know, I, I get really nervous. I start shaking, my lips start shaking, my hands start shaking. And, you know, I don't want them to just you know, just look at my work and be like, okay, yeah, she does really good work. But at the same time, I'm, like, I'm just so anxious. I'm just so nervous. Like, I want him to take me seriously. So um, it's what do you guys suggest? Yeah, go ahead, Charlie. Well, I believe in uh, two types of anxiety. I believe in rational anxiety and irrational anxiety. So for you, you know, to be about to close big deals and you're trying to sell something to somebody, you should have a little bit of anxiousness when it comes to that. Like, it's like me when I approach the radio every day or I go on stage to present something. Like, I know I'm doing this to millions of people, so I'm going to feel something in my stomach, you know. But what you have to do with that fear, you know, I got an acronym for fear and it's face everything and rise or fear everything and run. It sounds mm-hmm. like right now you're, you're being afraid of everything and running, but you just need to rise to the moment in those in those occasions because you're supposed to get goosebumps when you're about to close a deal or you're trying to close a deal. You're supposed to feel like you got to take a shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're supposed to feel something in your stomach. So I just think that's rational anxiety. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You just got to use that fear as fuel. The, the other place that I think is an interesting place to go is a couple things. One, you know, this is a self-esteem issue too. You know, by... You know, you're, you're making a very difficult transition for a lot of people, which is the transition of being an employee in a corporate environment for over a decade to being an entrepreneur where it's all on you. And there is oftentimes self-doubt of like, do you think you're worth it? Like it's your own self-doubt being imposed on you, something that might not even be coming out of their eyes. Does that make sense? It sure does. Yeah, so like to me, let me give you a really good piece of advice on this because that's exactly what I thought it was and this has really worked for a lot of my team that wasn't good at selling Mm -hmm. and now is good at selling. Mm -hmm. Never make a decision for the other party. And, and, And value is subjective. Do you know that I lose way more pitches than I win? Me, me Gary, right? And here's the funny thing. When I lose them, I just blame them. Like, 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 you know, like, like, I, real, I mean that. I mean it. Like, you just have to understand. Like, there's a million reasons somebody's gonna say yes or no. Let, let's mm-hmm. talk about real life. Do you, you know, we live in a society now where some of the disadvantages are now advantages. In, in the, in the current climate, some people may give you the business because they're trying to diversify their vendors. Yeah. Good yeah. for you. You deserve it. Yeah. And you know yeah. what? You're not gonna apologize for it. Nope. Right? Mm -hmm. Some people Mm -hmm. might have liked one thing you said. Somebody might have not liked something you said. 
I've not given business to people because I found out they were Patriot fans. That's real. (laughs) I have not given people business in the past because even though I thought they might be the right choice, I hate the Patriots so much. That's petty as fuck, The most petty, but it's my one place. (laughs) The Jets are my religion. Imagine somebody suing Gary because of sports bias. You know, like there's just like literally, 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 here's what I would say. You have to understand that them saying no to you isn't because you stink or because you're not good enough. It's because there's a million variables that go into somebody saying yes to a vendor. And so mm-hmm. when you become numb to it, earlier, everybody sucks, everyone's good. Yeah, yeah. You're just gonna, yeah. listen, you just gotta keep pitching and after 200 of them, let's make a judgment. You're definitely worthy of it. You're definitely worthy of it. You have to actually understand you're definitely worthy of it. Let me tell you why. People are busy and there's eight billion options. The fact that you got into the final pitch means you're already worthy of it. You have to understand that. Yeah. Do you, yeah. Do you see where I'm going? Yeah, because, definitely. Because you're not looking at it that way. You're looking at the final call being the worthiness. I'm telling you the fact that you're even at bat is the worthiness. Now you have to let karma, serendipity, That's and it. a million variables that you don't fucking control take mm-hmm. over, which lets you, let me tell you what it does, back to not being a caricature of yourself, we're being very full circle today, I'm feeling sharp. Mm-hmm. One of the reasons I never get too big on myself is when I win, I also know it's variables. Damn right. Yesterday yeah. they got yelled at for not having enough social media. So today VaynerMedia is gonna get the business, not Ogilvy. Yeah. You see where I'm going? Or, or just, as simple as di- just as simple as this person fucked with my idea, this person didn't. A hundred percent. They thought you were funny, they thought you were sweet, they thought you were smart as fuck. There's a, yeah. million, there's a million variables, but the market decides, but it's not a direct indicator on who you are as a person. Not at all. It means your business at that moment for that person. The reason I can deal with negative comments Comments is people haven't contextualized everything. Mm-hmm. The reason you can deal with not getting the business is you don't go home and say, I suck, I should go back and get a job, I wasn't good enough. You need to realize it was the serendipity of the moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're talking definitely. about, darling, you're talking about self esteem. You know that, right? I get that sometimes. Like sometimes I would think that's probably what it is. Um, you know, but then other times I'm like, Maybe I just need to get out more. Maybe I, sh- I just need to socialize more. Maybe I just need to get in settings where I network more. And are you saying? Just- are you now saying to get more pitches or to close the actual pitches? Just kind of natural pitches. Just you know, just align myself with more people in my industry. Talk about my- myself more. To do what? So pitch- that people just give you the business, so you don't have to pitch, or it gives you a better chance of getting the business when decision moment comes. Or just more so to just work on my own self when it comes to it speaking. Sound, it sounds like public. she, yeah. It sounds like she may be one of these socially awkward millennials who's used to talking with her thumbs. So once she gets in front of people, it's Brother, hard I'll be to honest have with conversations. You, I, lo- I love you, but like I swear, my life. I just think that that's a cliche. Like, ev- like that. Th- there's th- there, the most fifty three year olds are that way as well. Because it mm-hmm. because what it all manifests down to mm-hmm. is a level of confidence. Yeah. Like, like, listen. It's hard to have it when you're not in front of your keyboard. Yeah, but I get it, but it's guess what? It's easier to have it when you're on a smartphone. I don't know about that. I mean, I think a lot of people get positive reinforcement on the keyboard they, they wouldn't get in real life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's what, I, like, you know, because a lot of my deals, like I said, would come from me being behind my keyboard uh-huh. and so on and so forth. But no, I've just been getting um, to a place where I'm actually, like people are actually saying to me, hey, come on in so that we can have a chat with you. Come in and show us your work. I'm gonna give, so you, no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you something so empowering that's gonna put you in a good mindset. Mm-hmm. Just go to all these pitches. The best thing that can happen to you is going O for 800. Let me tell you why I'm a good entrepreneur. Because I, at six years old, rang people's doorbells and asked them if I could wash their car. That's just facts. This is not Mm -hmm. the legend of Gary. This is like, bring out everybody in Edison, New Jersey in 82, 83, that's me. (laughs) Can I tell you something about that? 99 out of 100 homes said no to me, right to my face. Mm. And I was a cute six year old. All you need is one yes, baby. All you need is one yes, and more importantly, and more importantly, you get used to no. Yeah. You have to get used to no. It's Mm -hmm. not what you're wearing, it's not what, it's not, it's just not that shit. It's mm-hmm. moments in time. And if somebody didn't want to hire you because of the way you look or like what you wore, I promise you, it saved you time because that's not gonna be a great yeah. client. No don't mean yeah. you suck at all. And no, people no, think it and people No really think it has does. nothing to do with you most of the time. It just doesn't. Yeah. 
I'm t- just keep going, let me tell you something. Just keep pitching and keep mm-hmm. losing and get used to it. It'll get real good. You'll really yeah. start liking it, I'm telling you. <laughs> Have you sold anything through a pitch yet? Yes, I actually just closed on a really good deal, but a three-year so deal. What's the problem? Um, with a with a company, but, but you what? know, I'm sorry. But what? Everybody who's watching right now is like, "Fuck." Yeah, what's the problem? <laughs> no, it, there is no problem. I'm. I just wanted to just know, like, what, what you know, a, going can forward. I, can I ask you? What, can I give what, you a different what, what? one? Uh-huh. Are you just lacking a little patience because you want more? Mm-hmm. Oh no, that's not it. That's okay, not it. I respect it really that. Was just a, it really was just me just asking, you know, coming from both you guys, what are some tips that you would want, you know, want to share with me going forward when it comes to pitching myself more? I think pitching to- is the closest thing yeah. to sports. No different than going live radio or live on stage. And I genuinely believe a little competitive anger, like mm-hmm. fuck everyone, is a good thing. Right, I mean it. Absolutely. I really do. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. it's a sport. Like, mm-hmm. you go in there and you're like competing with those people, even though you're oh, trying yeah. to pitch to them, you know? And mm-hmm. so, I don't know, like, I think Charlemagne said it right. I still, to this day, and I think I'm, listen, I think I'm real good at public speaking, I'm doing it at the top of the game. There's always mm-hmm. still the f- three to four minutes before I go on stage where I get into a weird kind of zone. You feel, it's, you feel the action. I think that was, that's a real good point. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. I'm fired Thank up for you. you. So much. You've won. It's, She's gonna win. It's She's, interesting though. She's set. Like, I Find somebody, I, I, that, girl, that lady's winning. Give me something. Yeah, something I, like pitched, more I in pitched a million TV shows and probably sold four or five. That's all I remember. Is the four or five I sold? I don't, I don't care about it's, the ones I didn't sell. Nobody remembers. Everybody keep. It, it, it's so sports is so good. Nobody remembers all of Jordan's missed shots. Nobody talks about LeBron not breaking through anymore. That's a fact. I mean, that's just not the way That's it is. Please leave your message for eight zero one nine one. Keep going. You know what I mean? Like it's so like it's just the way it is. Like that's the problem with social media too, though, because social media is painting this unattainable picture of perfection. But here's you see no sh- lose. You see no losses on social media. I'm trying to put it. I mean, I'm like social media is everybody's highlight reel. Sure, <laughs> like, it's what, but that's what society's always been. That's what we've always done. Yeah. This is about actually being raised in an environment respecting losing. It's not what we do in America. Who's this? Lonzo, what's up? It's oh. Gary V. You're on the Ask Gary V show with Charlemagne yeah. the God. What's up, Gary? What's up, man? Say hello to Charlemagne. What's up, Charlemagne? Your Lonzo, man. what's happening, brother? Stay up, stay up, you know. Just getting it like every Monday. What's uh what's your question, my guy? Oh man, what's the top three things you guys do to uh, keep your staff or the people around you inspired? It has to happen. I couldn't agree more, Charlie. To keep, what do we do to keep our staff inspired? Yes, I think we the people got, around you, your staff, your people. Well, if you if you got the right people around you, then I think the right people around you will understand that energy is never lost or destroyed; just merely transferred from one party to the next. So to keep my people inspired, I gotta stay inspired. You know what I mean? My people are a reflection of me. So if my people see me slacking or my people see me down or my people see me doubting myself, then they're going to start doubting me and then doubting why they work for me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you lead got, by example. Lead by, lead example. by example, I, I baby. I love that stuff, man. Yeah. I think it's a great point, but let me add something else and it's really fun to have Alex and in the room right now. It's timing is everything. I do that. Alex, how long have you been on my team? Alex has been on my team for a year. You know, my, my uh, I have Tyler and Alex as my admins. We're completely lead by example, osmosis, fucking throw in the pool, learn how to swim. That's just how we roll. You're about to find out. It's just yep. the way we go. However, yeah. I do think it's super important when you want to, when you feel it or you feel something. I, the other day, had to go out to the car. It was raining. And I said, Alex, come take a walk with me and just checked in. Just that, you know, that, that nine minute walk in the rain, right, where I gave her the umbrella and just walked, like, you know, I don't want to speak for her, but fuck, that shit matters. Right. It's just good to be heard, right? As you know, it's good yeah, to be yeah. heard, and it's dynamics, right? You know, Tyler's the original admin. She comes in. She's not sure like what my inner relationship with Tyler is, or with Andy, or with me. Like, so I'm a big lead by example. I'm a big osmosis. I don't like to micromanage, but I'm a big fan of the occasional check in. Create an environment where few people feel safe. I was thrilled with it because I felt like Alex was telling me the truth, or you know, definitely like we did a lot of good in nine minutes. It's just good to get it out. Right. It's also good for them to see that you're paying attention to that too. Yeah, otherwise, they're just otherwise yeah, they're just yeah, collateral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, it's reverse engineering it. them. 
And Alex may have it. different ambitions than Andy, and Seth may have different ambitions, and Seth may have different ambitions today than he did when he got on the team a year and a half, two years ago. So like, it's just watching them navigate what are they, uh, what are they about? What makes them happy? Uh, what are they striving for? But look, if they're gonna work as close to me, which is unbelievable leverage, yeah, I'm gonna be the, like we're gonna have a, a work ethic that's different than the rest of Vayner. We're gonna have a longer term view than the rest of Vayner. But the dividends are extraordinary. I mean, Nate and Trouty, you're like, look at those idiots. I love that, man. I love, <laughs> so I love, I love that whole mindset. I love, right? I, I love what Gary's saying because it's just like, sometimes you want your people to know that we work with each other. Like, you don't necessarily work for me. We're, we work with each other. I think I work for right. them, for real, for real, yeah. for real, for real. Because I'm gonna do mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, like to me, like, I'm gonna do mine. I'm working. I'm a doer. Like, you know, I need help, like, with things. But, like, I, I think when you really think you're working for them, and you're checking in, and look, you know, like some people are good at communicating, some aren't. Some people complain about everything, some have pride, you know, I'm a non-complainer, that puts pressure on everybody, like if I'm never complaining about anything, they're scared to complain about a 16 hour day, but they're not me, I own the whole thing, they shouldn't have to, but if they want to, and they're young enough, and they can do it right now, it's mm -hmm. gonna give them so much leverage with me, that Absolutely. you know, that's an interesting bet. So I think you have to you have to decide how much you care about them. For me, it's everything. When it all plays out, everything's different timing. If you work in VaynerMedia, not on Team Gary, you can get quicker results for your hard work with more short-term upside and less long-term upside. If you work on Team Gary, you get less results. I'm talking about pay and and like downtime. Like you get less of that upfront in years one and two because that's just fucking the way I roll but you have me for life All after right. year three or four. I'll fucking, I'll do everything for Andy for the rest of my life. Right. The only oh, vulnerability man. of that bet is if I die. I'm not kidding. So Is he in the will? Not yet, but like, but, but honestly, like, and for me, the will is a funny thing altogether too. For me, it's more about putting, the, you know, who's Andy at 52? What's he gonna care about? Like, right. you know, like, at, you know, if it plays out the right way, the way I want it to, it's never about the will, it's about putting people in a position of doing, back to the happiness over money as yeah. an ROI. You know, like, I don't know who here wants to be a dean of a school. Let me tell you something right now. Every dean of every college in 37 to 42 years, I can place because the whole game's gonna be rewritten. Maybe they want to be one hundred percent. You know, man, so, you guys stay stay inspired, stay inspiring. You guys, Gary, you turned my my world around eight years ago, brother. And why? And I love Lonzo, Monday why? because of you. Why? Man, I just I just I just started listening, and then I started doing, and then I turned you off for like six months, and then I turned you back on every once in a while. But I've been able to follow those steps and 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 learn from my team and people and building it. And what's I'm Lonzo? What, the dream. Lonzo, what's the biggest thing that? What's the biggest thing that like you completely were like, oh shit, I'm eight years ago. What was the biggest thing that I eliminated from you through the content? Man, um, self-pity, mm -hmm. doing like, you know, blaming others. I, I just switched it. And I'm like, you know what? If I'm gonna succeed or fail, it's on me. 100%, yeah, right. that's it. Take responsibility and, you know, take credit and responsibility and give love to the people around you that, that are there from you from day one. And, and just keep going. No excuses. Yeah, no right. fucking excuses. And you know, I appreciate it, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And you know what's super interesting Love, about Lonzo. that? You know, even, here's the best part. It doesn't mean that every, like when I say everything's my fault, it doesn't mean that that's true. It means that it's just a happy place to think about. It feels empowering. You know, like when people get mad at me, they're like, Gary, what about, what about, I'm like, you're right. You know how many of those things happen to me? I think There's a million outside forces, but like, you know, it's really exciting to be able to think about like I could possibly do something about this while to your point earlier, still recognizing like whether it's grieving or being disappointed about yeah. it. You have to be able to do that, but it's just, you know, to me it's like what's the alternative? I think accountability is very important. Oh man, I'm a big you fan. Know? Even, even, if it's, even if it may be outside sources that are manipulating the situation or against you in a situation, I still gotta realize, it's feel like what did through. I do in this? It's how you break through. Yeah. Hello? Popey? Pope? Pope. It's Gary Vaynerchuk. You're on the Ask Gary V Show with Charlemagne the Guide. How are you? What's up, Pope? Up? Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. What's your question? So, if you're stuck in a marital position and there's uh, issues where two people are on different entrepreneurship lifestyles, one only believes in theirs and not helping their spouse. 
Do you just say, fuck it, let's get a divorce, go our own separate <laughs> ways, or you continue and do your own thing and stay married? I didn't know you give relationship advice too, oh, Gary. Yeah, man. Wow. I think this is all relationship. <laughs> hey, it's still business. It's, it's, it's still business. Yeah. It's just very real life. It, by the way, I don't think most people can be successful entrepreneurs if they don't have healthy relationships because the support system for somebody that's trying to make it happen is very real. Mm -hmm. Look, I mean, look, yeah. look, it's never fun to sit around and, ha and, and not know any context and be like, you should get a divorce. Yeah. Like that yeah. might make good yeah. content, but that's scary, right? Here's what I will say. Yeah. I think if you dig a level deeper, that's where you start getting into the interesting stuff. Right? I get a lot of men and women who hit me up and they're like, man, my partner is just like not about it and not supporting me in any shape or form and doing this, that, and the other thing. And the question is, is that an insecurity or a shortcoming of the partner that it's a subconscious misery loves company thing that's just very real in society? Are you, and, and also, are you blaming? Are you blaming uh, other emotions on the business? Is he a good husband outside of y'all not being on the same page entrepreneur wise? Um, nope. I don't want to put. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Listen, by the way, you don't have to. The ah is enough. Yeah. I yeah, mean, it, but, it's a... but yeah, it, yeah, enough is enough. And the thing is, look, I, I, I let you do what you do. You do everything. I support you to 100%. Like Why can't I get that same support? Just, exactly. I believe in that but, you shit, know, man. If you, if, you, if, you see, if you see my vision and you think there's success in it, then, then why are you not helping me? Why are you not supporting me? Don't so, you hold, real too? quick, real quick. Helping and supporting are two different the way most people use the words. Helping, I'm okay with. Like, like if my spouse was like, I don't believe in that at all, I, like I don't wanna do the work. Like I don't mm -hmm. wanna give you money. I don't wanna pack your packages at night. I'm amazingly cool with that. I'm amazingly cool with that. But not supporting emotionally, not being a cheerleader or a full, I call it cheerleaders and fullbacks. Okay. Either you're gonna help me clear the lane so I can run, that's packing the packages, things of that, or, you're gonna be a cheerleader, which is like blindly like, you could fucking do it. If you're not willing to do one of those two things, you can't be the most important person in my life. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. I just wanna make sure that you, like sometimes spouses are like, yo, my fucking vision's on point. You pack my, sh like the eBay thing's actually coming up a bunch. They're like, yo, I'm doing it. I'm finding shit at garage sales and thrift stores. I want my husband or I want my wife to pack the shit and ship it. I'm like, mm, you want them to do the shitty thing. You know, you know, like, and if they don't believe in it, cause you shouldn't believe in it, it's weird. You just told your spouse, instead of making 78K a year being this executive, Gary V fucking told you that you can garage sale and make a hundo. Like they're scared, rightfully yeah. so, cause it's hard to get to 78K in garage sale and our Amazon, you gotta get good. Good, um, but but one or the two. If he if if he and this is now macro. If he or she is not willing to be a fullback, get in the trenches with you, or a cheerleader. They're not in the trenches. They're on their own shit. Even if they're lazy, let alone doing something on their own, they better be saying, "I hope you're crushing it. You're the best. You can do it." If they're not doing either one of those things, then what are they doing? Is that grounds for divorce, though? I think. Yeah, it's like, yeah. I don't know. If that's I, grounds I, I for divorce. I think you got other oh, yeah. issues. No, no, no. It's it, it's mostly the support issue. It's just like when you're when you're there doing everything for the other person, and the other person just like totally ignores you as a person. It's more than just like because the business side is just like he's a straight entrepreneurship or entrepreneur. But it's just like okay, so if you're afraid that I'm gonna be more successful mm -hmm. than you, then I don't really want to. You must got a little dick. I'm out of here, Charlemagne. <laughs> this ain't Breakfast that. Club. I, 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 I don't think so. Back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think that that correlation isn't true. Like I've seen it too much. I've been in the gym enough with people that I think are emotionally stable. Like I don't think that correlation is as true as people think. I think that what's happening is the the fact of the matter is if you don't feel here's what I would say: Is it grounds for divorce? Maybe, but what you have to have is a real conversation of like, yo, fuck you. You don't support me emotionally for shit and we're humans out here and unless you're willing to give that and if this is either out of insecurity that I might pop and be bigger mm -hmm. than you or you just don't even give a shit because you're all about you, that needs to be a conversation. What you said is key just now, emotional support. It sounds like there's a lack of emotional support. 100%. That has nothing to do with well, entrepreneurship. Well, you just want somebody to, yeah, you want him but, to support but you emotionally. It's manifesting in the entrepreneurial yeah. game. Go ahead. It's a lot because the thing is I'm a stay at home mother but yet I still grind like I do like not like totally garage sale but I'm still working on the full garage sale but I did do like a lot where 
I flipped like a thousand dollars worth of baby clothes, kids Into clothes. That. Like it's easy, you know. You're like, please, you say gotta, that one more time. What the easy flip, part? Uh, yeah, uh, flip the baby clothes for like a thousand. It's like a few months, not even six months. I like got a thousand dollars. Wow, it just, it just like, matters. Oh God, yeah, this flip thing I mean, is pissing me off. You got like I, I get made fun of because I'm like, oh look, I can flip that. I can sell it. Somebody send can them my. That. Listen, do me a favor. Of, Put them on, for everybody who makes fun of you for flipping from now on in the history of your life, send a DM on Instagram to me and that person and be like, yo, my friend Gary Vee wanted you to make fun of us in this DM, go. Yeah, how do you yeah, mad at well, people for you making know, my money? Parents are a big, put put my your parents fucking parents are on there first. <laughs> parents are the biggest fucking problem. Parents are fucking the biggest problem in society because parents use children as collateral for their own self-esteem and it needs to fucking stop. Yeah, most definitely, because for my kids, I, um, my son, I know he's not really technically full college smart, but we're working on uh You know who wasn't full college smart? Right Me and Charlemagne. I never went to college. Yeah. I went to Mount Ida College. I played Madden all day. <laughs> yeah. That's what I majored in. Madden, CeeLo, Spades, Hearts, flipping shit. I was doing it then. That's what I majored in. I, I did. One, I wasn't college ready. I did one week of Trident Technical College in Charleston, South Carolina, and looked around the room and said, "Why am I here? I need to be at the radio station. Why am I here?" Yeah, I, and I, I looked around in the first week and said, "This four-year vacation is going to be the greatest shit of my life. Can't wait because I'm going to work my fucking face off for the rest of my life." Yeah, and that's a lot of parents don't want their kids to fail because parents they are insecure that. and care about other people's other parents' judgment on their kid. And they don't yep. understand not and they don't understand non traditional hustles. You know what I'm saying? If you're yeah. my mom's a school teacher, my father did construction. I tell them I want to do radio. They're like radio. What the hell is that? Yeah. I'm an immigrant. My kids are first first generation kids. So mm-hmm. therefore the way that I grew up is definitely different and mm-hmm. the way that I'm doing I'm parenting is mm-hmm. definitely different from my parents. And the thing 100. is like look there's opportunities out there and this is like the age of technology. Like you gotta Damn get right. it. There's like five it. year olds babies they're out there getting let me let me let me let me give you two cents do what what you want you i like everything i'm hearing for real i mean this just over genuine like like listen i I can hear you listen i can hear you being genuine as fuck with us ready one thing one thing massively over communicate with your parents and your husband and everybody else to put it on wax put it on the record because a lot of people just make these decisions, I'm one of them, all in their own head, and then they move, and they expect everybody that did something wrong to just deal with the collateral damage, which is, in my opinion, fair. Mm -hmm. What's even better, so that you have no regret when you die, I want you to highly consider being as authentic, because you're keeping shit in, being as authentic as humanly possible to all three of them, over-authentic, for the record, the fuck you, I love you, how can we do this? If we can't, cool, fuck you. That talk, and then you can really move because you're giving them the opportunity to adjust because they can't read your dome either. All right. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. Right. yeah. And yeah, people like you and I, because I can feel it already, we're not as good at that. Do you understand? Yeah. So, so you live with no regret, one last at bat to over communication for the record giving them a month or two to navigate that new data, then make a decision. And, and she may need a mediator. You might want to try a couple's therapy. Yeah. Couple's therapy oh, might we, be yeah, good we, for you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Trust me, I've been there, done that. I've exhausted every option. Y'all did couple's therapy after. already? Um, I'll, just, I'll just say the only thing that he accepted was uh, therapy with uh, uh, his married couple friend and that's it. And Understood. Well, listen, let's just say that. listen, listen yeah, here's what I would say. Paper soon listen, listen, <laughs> when pe- you, one, uh, this is super simple. Leave one manifesto on the table for perpetuity between you and him and you and your folks so that nobody's confused what's in your head. Nobody, full 100% truth then you can navigate lightly as a feather to happiness for yourself and your kids forever. Thank you, and I'm pretty sure some of people are gonna figure out who this is now. I'm sure. Pretty original. I'm sure. And people are watching this show, so you know. No, I know. <laughs> Listen, I wish, I wish you nothing but the best. All right, thank you, you See guys ya. are real, thanks. Thanks, bye All right, bye. Wow. That was a great way to end. Wow. I loved it. That was real.
That was very honest. Well, what's really about that is what's real about this, which is real about literally the whole fucking conversation, which is very simply, the internet is gonna expose everything anyway. Yes. There's no hiding. So be transparent. So move into it. We live in the age of transparency. And 100%. plus it's, easy, it's easier to wake up every day and just be yourself. Like I'm Charlamagne, not, we're gonna yeah. link this. Who should get this book, in your opinion? Who's watching or listening on the podcast right now? Because we're gonna air this in different times or a clip from these things. Who should pick up this book? And it, team, let's make sure we link all the books. Anybody who suffers from anxiety, anybody who suffers from PTSD, trauma, anybody who feels like they're the go-to guy and uh, go-to girl and they don't have a go-to person to go to themselves. You know, because I'm talking about a lot of the therapy that I've been doing over the past year in this book as well. So. I just think it's for anybody who's got any of these so-called mental health issues that they haven't chosen to deal with. I chose to deal with mine. Good for you. Yes, no sir. No question day. That was just enough. You keep asking questions. We'll keep answering them.